the man with the yellow hat and George visited Professor Wiseman. Hi, guys. This is the final draft of my new book. Would you proofread it and check to make sure everything's spelled right? Sure, no problem. What's this one about? Numbers. Huh? It's called, Is Seven Necessary? Now there's something I never even thought about. That's why you're the genius. Take care of it. That's my good copy. I'll take care of it like it was my own monkey. You've been playing for two days nonstop. When's it my turn? You want me to give up going for the record just because my little sister wants her turn? Um, yes. Hi there, Betsy, Steve, Sharky. Hi. What's that? Oh, this is Professor Wiseman's new book about number sequences and logic. Ha, huh. Betsy's too young to understand those words. I'm not. Then what do they mean? Um, well, I'll know after I read the book. Whoa! <laughs> Sharky wants to keep walking. <laughs> See ya! Oh, everything looks so good. Best crop all year. Don't miss out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Slow down, uh -huh. George. Let's put them in a bag. George, hold on. Wait for me. <laughs> he can't wait to get home and eat that great fruit. Smart monkey. Fast, too. You better hurry. Uh, slow down. I I'll bruise my melon. Ah, <sighs> <sighs> now I'm going to sit back and read Professor Wiseman's book. Wait a minute, where's the book? Well, where could it be? I, I, I had it in my hand the whole time. Uh, oh! <laughs> you know, you're right, George. I put it down to bag fruit. Let's go. Uh, oh. are, are you sure I put it down here? Uh, excuse me, did you see a package about this big on the ground? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I'd have lost this package, Professor Wiseman would be so disappointed. I didn't even know I had it. Sharp-eyed monkey. George was glad to help, especially when he got a plum reward. The man went home. But George chose to stay out, in case he could do more good and get more rewards. Ooh. That friendly woman forgot a package. Here was his chance to earn rewards. <laughs> George sure picked the right person to help. She left another package behind. <laughs> Hunley didn't know what George was doing, but if he was leaving, whatever it was wouldn't be happening here this time. George was starting to think how lucky she was to have someone with the brain of a monkey to help. Because, boy, was she forgetful. Bringing home a new rug is always a one-man, one-monkey job. So George was happy to have his friend, the man with the yellow hat, around to help. Uh, I'll take the front, George, and you make sure the back doesn't hit anything or drag on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Hold 
on. Are we all clear back there? <laughs> okay, I'm putting it down. <sighs> Whew. Thanks, George. Boy, I am so happy I got this rug. George liked the way the big tube looked in the room. <laughs> looked good flat, too. <laughs> Professor Wiseman was right. It's a perfect rug. Oh, I've got to take a picture to show her. Oh, uh, wouldn't you know? I forgot to buy batteries. Okay, I'll be right back. Be a good little monkey. <sighs> what a great rug. <laughs> Hauling a rug always makes a monkey thirsty for grape juice. A lot of grape juice. The rug made for good toe squishing. So it would probably be fun to jump on. This wasn't good. George had to get that juice off the rug. Now what? <laughs> soap. Soap cleans stuff. So more soap cleans stuff more. Bubble bath would make it smell good. Definitely too much soap. Okay, perfect. But there was something missing. Water! today. Well, I'd like to buy this. It'll go perfectly with my great new rug. Wait, wait, these legs. Hmm. Yeah, I'm afraid they'd snag my great new rug. Oh, I could fix that. Swap those legs out for ones that are less snaggy. Just take a few minutes if you don't mind waiting. I can't wait to get a picture of that footstool on my new rug. Ah. <sighs> Oh, uh, did I mention I just got a great new rug? <laughs> George had to get all those suds out of the house so he could see if the rug was clean. George was happy he spotted the glass of juice. That could have caused a real mess. Ah. Grape juice must help you think, because George suddenly remembered when the Rinkin's basement flooded. Ah. Ah. <laughs> to George, it was a perfect morning, eating and reading and having nothing better to do. But there was one thing he was supposed to do. George, yeah. didn't you promise to clean up this room yesterday? <laughs> you can't leave toys lying around. Someone could get hurt. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
Lucky for me, this wall was here. Now, please, clean up, George. When I come home from work, we'll spend the evening in our nice, clean living room, okay? <laughs> Rolling on the car looked fun. Except for the slamming into the wall part. If one car was fun, imagine what you could do with two. George had to show his great new car shoes to someone. George couldn't wait to see the look on Hunley's face. <laughs> that wasn't the look he expected. <laughs> Hunley didn't want monkey handprints all over the clean doors. George didn't know how to turn around and go back. I don't know. We have too many roller skates. Now, what can we do to make people more interested in skates? Well, how about having a roller skating monkey give demonstrations? And just where are we going to find a roller skating monkey? The skates are our gift to you. You just skate in front of the store whenever you can. <laughs> mm, you'd better give him another pair, hon. He's got four feet. Well, I thought he had four hands, but fine. Two pairs it is. Okay, let's uh, let's see what you can do. Uh, maybe he should practice outside. Yeah, gotcha. Now you practice, little Mister. Then come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you ever think we'll see him again? If you can't trust a monkey, who can you trust? <laughs> George liked his new skates. But what were these black things for? <laughs> George thought that even Hunley would have to admire his skates, especially since now he knew how to stop. <laughs> huh? Oh, hey, let me help you with those. Uh, Hunley, you're in charge. Woo, woo. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. A monkey on wheels looked wrong, but a proud, sleek dachshund on nice wheels. George knew exactly what Hunley wanted to do. Being a monkey in the big city can be an exciting experience. <laughs> isn't perfect. <coughs> oh. <coughs> oh. Wow, we could really use some fresh country air, huh? The man with the yellow hat knows when the time's right to get his monkey out of the city. Take a deep breath and fill your lungs with good, clean country air. Ah, 
Ah, it's good to be back, isn't it? You can let the clean air out, George. There's plenty here. Well, George, looks like Bill built a bunny hutch in his yard. Want to go see the bunnies? <laughs> there you go. Hey there! Got George with you? <laughs> How'd you know it was us? Hmm, well, guess. Hey, I just got bunnies. Want to see? <laughs> George had never seen a bunny up close before. You like bunnies, George? Uh-huh. Do they have names? Sure. There's Fuzzy, Whitey, Brownie, Spotty, Black Ears, Cottontail, and Herbert Neninger. And that's their mom. Ah! Wanna pet one? <laughs> Which one? Brownie? Whitey? <laughs> Fuzzy. Fuzzy's cool. There's some... Things you need to know about bunnies before you pet one. Oh no! It's time to deliver my papers. Ooh. Sorry! Come back tomorrow and you can pet them all. <laughs> well, you're just gonna have to wait till tomorrow, George. George could barely stand it. Who can wait a whole day to pet bunnies? Going out? <laughs> Be a good little monkey. <laughs> George thought he could keep the bunnies company while Bill was away. They were so still, so quiet, so fuzzy. Bunnies, bunnies. Bill wouldn't mind if he petted one bunny, just once, if he was very, very careful. <laughs> the bunnies were so still and quiet and fast. They were almost too fast to see. Definitely too fast to pet. And absolutely too fast to do as they were told. Their mom knew enough to stay in the hutch. But George wasn't taking any more chances. George decided he'd better figure out how many bunnies got loose by counting their bowls. Seven. That meant he still had to catch seven. At least they couldn't get out of the yard. Hunley was proud to be a dog who couldn't be distracted. His mind was always on his job. Whether his friend the doorman knew oh. it or not. Oh, what is it, boy? Hungry again? <laughs> Elevator's here. Good morning. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. Enjoy it. Good morning to you, too, Hunley. <laughs> I know exactly what you're thinking. 
Hunley was thinking that with George out there, the city might not survive, or worse, become completely disorganized. Who knows what his hungry boy wants? Can I read your mind, huh? The smartest wiener dogs are always the most misunderstood. George wanted to take the man with the yellow hat to see where he'd done his job. In Chef Biscetti's kitchen. Oh, Giorgio was a big help to me. He was especially good at cleaning up a mess. Well, he's had a whole lot of practice. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid I have no work for you today. <laughs> oh, you know what? My friend, Mr. Glass, needs help across the town, and you would be perfect for the job. <laughs> oh, George, I don't have time to take you across town. Maybe another day. Uh, uh, well, uh, I can take him there if it's okay with you. <laughs> oh, great. All right. Do you promise to be a good little monkey? <laughs> <laughs> the job is at the building my friend owns, the Glass Palace. Now, like I told you, Chef, I need a window washer who can work way, 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 way up high without getting dizzy. That's six ways. Uh, that's a lot of ways. Uh, but Mr. Glass, Giorgio's a great climber. He's a monkey! Congratulations. <laughs> I need every window clean by 2.15. Can you do it? <laughs> well, here's everything you need. And a cool cap. Now, window washing is serious work. You take your work seriously. I like that in a monkey. Never mind what people inside are doing. Don't be curious, or you'll get into trouble! <laughs> George promised to be good. But little monkeys sometimes forget. It was hard not to look inside, but George concentrated on his work. crowded city. What's more relaxing than driving out to the country for the day? Oh. <sighs> okay. Sometimes the drive is slow. Oh. But it's a good time to think about relaxing stuff, like feeding ducks. That was the worst traffic ever. But the day's not over yet. Let's feed the ducks. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Rankins. <laughs> uh, something wrong? The chicks wandered off. My chicken is very upset. Aww. If I don't find them before dark. Yeah. Not much time left to feed ducks, either. I'll help you search. You can feed them without me, okay, George? Uh. 
but stay by the duck pen. I don't want you to get lost like the chicks. Feeding ducks is like a relaxing brain massage. <laughs> Jumpy Squirrel was a good jumper. And an even better food finder. This was great. George had never had ducks swim all around him before. If ducks swam all around, it meant he was floating down river with ducks. It was almost like being a duck. Let's see if the chicks are along the fence. Hey, maybe they squeezed out here. Then they could be anywhere. <laughs> maybe they'll figure out how to find their way home again. At that very moment, the chicks were trying to find their way home. But they were bad at it. Really bad. And speaking of lost, George was too busy being a duck to notice he was floating away from home. Fast. <laughs> Jumpy tried to warn George because he didn't want his friend to get lost and take all that food with him. Soon, they were in a place they'd never seen before, which made George curious. Jumpy thought they should jump onto that small boat on the right. Or was it on the left? And it wasn't small. It wasn't even in the river. But Jumpy missed home. Watching for the man with the yellow hat to come home was easy for a sharp-eyed monkey like George. Because nobody else was that yellow. <laughs> well, almost no one. Seeing the man was great. But seeing him with a present was even better. <laughs> well, hello. How was your morning? Were you a good little monkey? <laughs> That's my monkey. Hold on, George. That present's not for you. Huh? It's for Professor Wiseman's birthday. You can see what's inside when she opens it. Uh, tonight at dinner. <laughs> dinner was years away. 
maybe just one peek now. If you really want to unwrap something, come in the kitchen. <laughs> Here, you can pretend the orange peel is gift wrap. You'll be helping me in unwrapping too. Oh. <laughs> orange skin didn't feel like gift wrap, but there was something good inside. <laughs> Maybe that thick skin was there to hold back squirts. Now, the onion head skin that felt like gift wrap. <laughs> but it didn't smell like any present. <laughs> and no wonder they keep cheese wrapped up. <laughs> These coverings were all different, but they hid the same thing. Yeah. Something smelly. But that couldn't be the same reason the present was wrapped, could it? George, could you please peel me one apple? <laughs> this was much better. The apple smelled good. Uh, George, after you've done one apple, leave the bowl of unpeeled fruit out, okay? Those are Professor Wiseman's favorites that I bought especially for her birthday. Um, George, could you pick up my pants for me? They're being altered at the department store. Don't worry, we won't open it without you. Phew. <laughs> Have a seat. I'll be back in one moment with the pants. The man with the yellow hat was right. This errand had completely taken George's mind off the... Fancy, beautiful wrapped present. <laughs> nothing to eat, nothing to smell, nothing. All George uncovered was a mystery. Why just wrap empty boxes? George was helping get ready for breakfast while the man with the yellow hat got an early jump on some important work. <sighs> this country air is just what I needed. Yeah, by tonight, my speech for the tribute to Professor Wiseman will be perfect. <laughs> Her great vision. Oh, um, her great insight exhibit, right? Uh, uh, algae. Wooling mammoth. Her love of the wooling mammoth. Hmm, I don't. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, okay, okay, I'll stop for breakfast. Well, fruit and eggs are good. <laughs> These cupboards are too small for us. Maybe we should buy less food. <laughs> the thought of having less food made George more hungry. Well, we still need breakfast. Hey, I'll run to the market. Maybe you can finish my speech for me while I'm gone. Oh. 
Jumpy out with extra nuts. <laughs> He's storing food. Squirrels hide food in the ground. Then when they need it, they dig it up and have plenty to eat. <laughs> George never knew the ground was such a good place to store food. <laughs> George and the man with the yellow hat needed a good place to store food. George could hardly wait to chew the rewards of squirrel-style storage. <laughs> mm. Mm. George, these donuts are delicious! <laughs> George, this fish is phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now for breakfast, then back to work on my speech. <laughs> Where's our food? George, I think there's a food thief on the loose. Why would someone steal paprika? <laughs> George wanted to explain that he had it all taken care of. <laughs> Do we have gophers? <laughs> gophers stole our food? <laughs> <laughs> My paprika! Why would someone bury paprika? <laughs> the apartment building where George lived was a very orderly place. And that's how Hunley liked it. They're here to clean your carpets! People came. And people went. The elevator arrived. And people came down the stairs. Everything in Hunley's lobby was orderly and neat. Well, almost everything. We can't go back into the apartment until the carpet is dry, George. So you stay here in the lobby while I run my errands, all right? Okay. Oh, oh, and in case you get hungry. I won't be long. Hunley didn't think George should be eating a sloppy apple in the lobby. George decided it would probably be better to eat his apple someplace else. Hunley had never been through this door before. but he was pretty sure it was against the rules to be out here.
Hanley didn't think George would ever get in that way. Ooh. So he'd find a better way. At least there was one thing Hunley knew for certain. Home was this way. Or maybe that way. Just imagine the terrible things that that sloppy monkey was doing to his lobby. When Hunley found his building, it was even worse than he imagined. But then Hunley saw that it wasn't his street at all. But that meant he had no idea where he was. George had been drawing all morning. But when he drew too long, he got a cramp in his foot. <laughs> That's funny, a banana driving a car. Oh, it's me. Well, George, I am honored to be in such a great work of art. Uh -huh. Hey, and you know where great works of art belong? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. On the refrigerator. Huh. What we need to hold that up is a magnet. Uh -huh. Well, let me see. I remember having one somewhere. Oh. <laughs> well, this is the only one I got. Hmm, you're right. It really doesn't do it justice. Okay, we have a mission. Go buy great magnets so you can hang that. <laughs> George, careful, don't swing from the... <laughs> refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, okay, two missions. Magnets, refrigerator door handle. Hi, Professor Wiseman. <laughs> Hi, guys. Wow, you're in the wrong place. That belongs in an art museum. <laughs> We're here to buy cool magnets to stick George's picture to the refrigerator. <laughs> Say, while you're here, do you want to see our new magnetorium? Yeah. Oh, were you talking to George? George was in a hurry to get home and hang up his drawing. But he was curious. Welcome to the Magnatorium. <laughs> oh, I think magnetism is my favorite invisible force. George knew he could spend all day here. But they were on a mission. Ooh, ooh. Hmm? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, we'll come back another day and play with all this stuff. Uh, before you go, try to touch this magnet against the back of the cars. <gasps> now try to touch it to the front. Woo! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Everything isn't magnetic, just certain metals. Huh? Oh, George, check this out. This isn't a magnet, see? Huh? But anything attracted to a magnet can be turned into a magnet by rubbing the magnet on it like this, in the same direction. It's all so amazing. Oh, I almost forgot this. What amazing thing does that do? This? It's the pizza pan you lent me. I'm returning it. Thanks. George was still in a hurry to buy some small magnets Ooh. and get home. <laughs> The day started with a wham, wham, wham. Lots of people heard it. But only one was so curious, he had to go see what it was. Ah! Wow, pretty impressive construction site, huh, George? <laughs> That's what it'll look like when they're all done. <gasps> my hat! Oh, stop! My hat! Anybody? These metal boxes looked important. Metal on the outside? Tasty sandwich inside. With all this great equipment to see, George didn't want to waste time on food. It's more fun when it's nice and loud. <laughs> now you see, there it goes again. Why is my building groaning and quaking? I think the ground under the foundation is shifting, but I can't figure out where or why. I want this place to be safe. We'll have to shut the site down until we find the problem. George? George! Get down! That's not a playground! <laughs> Is this your monkey? <laughs> and is this your cat? <laughs> no, but I am. Um, I I know her. Oh, not good cat. Well, <laughs> looks like lunch is on me. <laughs> The next morning, the man with the yellow hat was doing a little constructing of his own. Good morning, George. What'll it be for breakfast, waffles or pancakes? <laughs> waffles and pancakes it is. I'm sorry, George, but there are no blueberries. We'll just find something else fun to put on top. <laughs> or you could go down to the store and buy blueberries.
Okay, George, this is a 10. So be very <laughs> careful. <laughs> George suddenly realized something was missing. No wham, wham, wham. Maybe they were done. <laughs> the building was built. The blueberries would have to wait. The building wasn't done. But no one was working today. Maybe this was a perfect time to look around without distracting anybody. How would he pay for the blueberries? George was definitely going to give Compass blueberries for his help. It was a perfect summer day. The kind of day that just makes you want to kick something over and over. Which is just what George was doing. You're improving, George. You just need to keep practicing. <laughs> oh, sure. The way to get better at anything is with lots of practice. Oh, hey, you better get going. Your dog's sitting Charky today, right? <laughs> if only there was a way to dog sit and practice kicking. George, thanks for doing this. I'll only be at the hairdressers for one hour. I'd take Charky with me, but some people are allergic to dogs. You're welcome to sit Charky in my apartment. Or you could stay outside. Charky likes the park. <laughs> All right, have fun. Oh, Betsy and Steve say once or twice Charky has slipped away. So please keep an eye on her. <laughs> Sharky could get off her leash this easily, George would never get a chance to practice kicking. Unless he did it right here. It wasn't the park, but it'd do. And best of all, it had its own soccer goal. Some dogs don't know the difference between play and practice.
chasing Sharky did have its rewards. Sharky wasn't going to squeeze under there again. Ah. <laughs> 